debts and relationships. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How are you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, Arthur, podcaster, and your Uplifting Life partner. Now, this topic is one that's, for those that don't know, um, I was in the financial service field for about 30 years. And what really drew me to that is the conversation that we hear all the time is that most marriages break up or most people relationship problems occur because of debt. I shouldn't say debt, but money. <laughs> we'll, we'll, just, we'll, we'll cover this debt thing. But the number one thing is money. And I had a gentleman one time, he really wanted to debate me on that. And so I let him share his information. And when he got through it, I said, huh. So I'm just curious, why do wealthy people keep getting divorced? And he was sitting there with like, uh, uh, see folks, um, it would have been good for me to live with that philosophy and tell people, yes, money is the number one reason people get divorced because I was in the financial service field. But the more I sat across the kitchen table with families, the more I realized that that was a myth. Now, I will agree, it is probably the number one topic in most relationships. I remember watching um, a Oprah episode one time, and I guess it was the second time this particular couple came on the show, but the first time that they came on the show, they were thinking about getting divorced and it all revolved around money. Again, as everyone says, because that's the number one reason people get divorced. So they were saying the sex life was messed up and the way that they weren't getting along and they were saying all these different things. So Oprah had a financial person on there who helped them after the show. And then they came back. And so the show I saw was the second show of them coming back after they've sat with this financial planner. And they talked about how the... Uh, the wife would talk about how the husband used to just, he would go buy things for their daughter and, you know, he just would do stuff without having a conversation with her. And so that would get her very irritated because she felt he was being very irresponsible. So the financial planner basically helped them uh, talk things through and share. And, and so here it is. Now they're back on the second show and they're talking about how their sex life is so much better and, they're not thinking about divorce and how everything is just so great because of this financial planner. And I'm sitting there shaking my head and, and I'm kind of chuckling and I'm like, I know I ain't the only one seeing this. They're not, their relationship is not back on track because they had a financial planner and money was their issue. Their issue was the fact that they weren't on the same squad, that they weren't working together all the financial planner did was tell them, we got to get you guys on the same team. They didn't, they didn't get any more money coming in. That didn't change. Oprah didn't give them more money. Their jobs didn't offer more money. Money didn't change. The way they dealt with each other changed. And they got on the same team and worked together on the finances, which is why you guys always hear me say, character and integrity is the most important, and we can go get the money and material things together, but the world keeps trying to teach, it's about the money. And that's how why we're on this subject here, because debt would be a part of the money. Um, I was listening to another financial planner, um, uh, and no, no they're, they're a relationship person, expert. <laughs> you guys know how I feel about when I hear people use those tags. That's why I don't use those tags. But anyway, um, they were saying that like for them, one of the first things they want to look at is a person's debt. If a person had, they look for someone who has no debt as a good candidate because it kind of tells you back to this myth, but this was her teaching. It kind of tells you about their character and, and this and that and the stuff that we all keep hearing that this is what debt and what money and stuff, you know, that it tells a person's character. No, a person's character tells. If you watch them, you'll see their character. But anyway, so again, because I was in the financial service field, when she said that, I'm just sitting there going, and you're teaching people this. Here's the thing I want you guys to understand. 
To find someone that doesn't have debt is almost impossible. Wealthy people, I'm talking about people that got a lot of money, are all in debt. Most of the things they own is debt. What does that mean? They use, and you guys have heard this said before, using other people's money. So in other words, if I can get a bank, a credit card, or any, any kind of way, somebody's willing to give me money or loan me money at 1% to 2% interest, and I know how to take that money and go make 10 to 20 to 30%, that's called smart business. And guess what? That loan is a debt. How many people outright own their homes? Very few. This is how real estate works. A person has a home. For example, let's say you had a home. And I like that home. And I go, can I have your home? And you go, yeah. I, I can give you my home, but what I want for this home is you need to give me a hundred thousand dollars. You give me a hundred thousand, you can have a house. And I go, cool, it's a deal. We sign a contract, but I don't have a hundred thousand dollars. So what do I do? I go to an institution and say, can you loan me a hundred thousand dollars? That's called debt because I owe someone. It's money coming out of my pocket. I say, can you loan me 100000 And they go, well, what you have as collateral. That means what can I get if you don't pay me my 100000 What do you have that's worth it of value to me for me to give you $100,000? And I go, I got this house. See, because I made an agreement with you for the house. So I'm telling them, this is what I'll do. You give me the 100000 If I don't pay you my loan, on this loan, you get to hire the house. And they go, cool, collateral. We make the deal. I get the 100000 from the institution, give it to you, the homeowner. Everybody's happy. Guess what? I'm in debt to the institution. I tell people, if you don't believe it, don't pay your mortgage. See what happens. See, a lot of people running around talking about it's my house. Don't pay your mortgage. See what happens. It ain't yours. It's a debt. It's yours when it's free and clear. And even then, you can still lose it. Don't pay the property tax. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't understand. There's a lot of people that are real estate investors. That's how they buy homes. They buy it by people's tax, you know, by people not paying on the taxes. They go buy it, they go pay the taxes for you. And if you don't pay the taxes, depending on the state or whatever you're in, if you don't pay it in a certain amount of time, they get your home. Folks, we got to understand debt is not bad. I remember uh, listening to Robert Kiyosaki uh, make the comment. He said, Let's say you had $100,000. Your dream car is a Lamborghini. Now, you get that $100,000, do you go buy the Lamborghini in cash? He says, yes, you do. Poor people do. He said, why? Because they have their dream car, the Lamborghini. But here's what happens. A year from now, the car breaks down. They don't have the money to fix the car because a Lamborghini is a very expensive car, which means you know it's going to cost your arm and a leg to get it fixed. So guess what? In a year from now, they no longer they have to sell the Lamborghini because they can't afford to fix it. Now they're back to being poor, which they were when they bought the Lamborghini anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at least with the Lamborghini, they knew if they turned it, they'd get some of their money back. But uh, bottom line is they go back to being poor. What a wealthy person would do is take that 100000 go buy an apartment complex, let the people who are renting the apartments buy the Lamborghini. You guys follow me? But the wealthy person is still not going to use their money. Why use my $100,000? 
when I can go get an institution who's willing to pay me one to two percent. I'll let them pay for the, the, the unit. And I'll let the the uh, the people, because a lot of times institutions, if you got the money, that's when they want to give. See, when you don't need them, that's when they want to give you a loan. So if you when you show them you got money, they'll give you money. That's just the way it works. You got money, everybody wants to give it to you, and at a very low interest. Why? Because we assume just because a person got some money, it means they got character and integrity. Doesn't mean that. We watch this happen all the time where there's people that you find out. But anyway, I'm not going to get into all that, but we find out some people that owe a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll leave that alone. But that's what ends up happening. And so, but the bottom line is they use other people's money because I've heard people say, but why would they do that? Why would they go, you know, use money? The, you know, the apartment complex, as far as the Lamborghini, they're like, what's the interest rate on it? Who cares? I'm not paying for it. The tenants are paying for it. See what I'm saying? The thought process? You got to understand about money. Wealthy people always use, that's why, that's where it came from, using other people's money. That's the way they operate. They're always using other people's money. The philosophy is, why would I use my own when I can use yours at 2% and turn around and make... What do you think the banks are doing? That's one of the things I used to share with people all the time. I said, you put $1,000 in the bank. And this is what the bank is going to do. They're going to pay you, tell you on your savings account, I'll pay you 1%. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever heard of the rule of 72. And real estate is called the rule of 79, but it does the same thing. The rule of 72 just basically says, I mean, it's the same thing. It's just the larger the numbers that we're playing with. 79 will be more accurate, the big, the larger the number. But the concept is still the same. And what do I mean by that? If somebody was to give you 1% interest, then you divide that interest with a stated number of money. So the example we're going to use here is we say $1,000. If I have $1,000 and I give it to an institution and they say, I'm going to pay you 1%. You take one, divide it into the number 72. That's why it's called the rule of 72. What is the answer? 72. What does that mean to you and I? $1,000 at 1% will double to $2,000 in 72 years. Woo! Woo! Think about that. It's going to take 72 years at 1% for your th your thousand dollars to double to two. Wow. So if you could get 12%, 12 percent, twelve goes into seventy two six times. That means money doubles every six years. So if you had that thousand dollars in six years, it would double to two. You guys follow? Six more years, which means we'll be twelve years out. It'll double from two to four. Make sense? And if we add six more years, which means the 18th year out, the money's going to double again from four to eight. But you see the difference. I just did 18 years and we're at $8,000 at 12%. And at 1% it's going to take 72 years for the money to double. 72. Let that sink in. 72. So when your bank is giving you 1%, 2% on your savings... Now, I ain't telling you to blow your money, but at one to two percent, blow your no. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but just understand the concept. It's gonna take seventy-two years for that stated number of money to double. I'm not gonna tell you guys go blow your money, but you better think about it. If it's gonna take seventy-two years for your thousand to go to two, if that's all you got as a savings, you're gonna be poor anyway in seventy-two years because that two thousand dollars ain't gonna buy nothing. It probably ain't gonna buy you a loaf of bread. So. Uh, you ain't gonna have to worry about, I got some money, because no, you don't. You ain't gonna have none. But anyway, I'm not advocating blowing your money, but I want you guys to understand the concept. So what am I getting to with all this is you got to understand how money works. Oh, that's what I was sharing is, is, is so what the bank does, and I wanted to share the rule of 72 so you understand that. The bank is going to let you give them $1,000, and they're going to charge, they're going to give you 1% to 2% interest on your savings. What they're going to do is take your thousand dollars 
and they might give it right back to you in the form of a credit card. You guys follow me? And give you a thousand dollar credit limit. You going? Ain't my bank nice? You gave them a thousand dollars. They gave you a thousand dollar credit line, and they're charging you. I just used the example of six percent doubling. I mean, twelve percent doubling every six years. So in eighteen years, they would have eight thousand, and they don't have to give you two thousand back on your savings for seventy two years. And they already got eight thousand at eighteen years, and of course, every six years is going to double and double and double, folks. You got to understand how this stuff is working. So bottom line is I'm saying, if you understand that concept, why wouldn't you take that $1,000 at 1% if they're offering that to you because you got good credit or you got money or whatever? And why wouldn't you take the 1000 and invest like they did? They put it in credit cards or they put it in, in different things. Folks, your money's not just sitting. The banks are using your money. But anyway, why wouldn't you take that same money and go make money. That's called using other people's money. So again, if they offer me credit cards and give me $50,000 and they only want to charge me 1% to 2%, wouldn't it make sense to take that money and go put it on an apartment complex? Who's going to pay me more than that? Yes, I have debt now. I got an apartment complex and I got to pay back... Uh, uh, the $50,000 loan, but other people are paying both. They're paying the mortgage and they're paying back the loan. And I'm going to make sure that the way it's set up, I'm still making money, but I'm using other people's money and I am in debt. So what I'm getting to is debt is not a bad word. If you understand it, there's good debt. There's bad debt. I understand what she's saying is, I want to see, are you responsible with your debt? That's not what she said. She's teaching people, look for people with no debt. Those people are very hard to find. Most people are paying on your car. That's a debt. You owe people. Money's coming out of your pocket. That's a debt. If I'm giving you money, that's a debt. I obviously owed you. That's why that's a debt. Debt's not bad. Well, it could be. If it's bad debt, that's a different thing. That's why you'll hear people, again, talk about cars. They say, why get a car? And you know you're going to lose the value of the car as soon as you pull off the lot. And they'll tell you that's a bad investment. Well, could be, maybe not. It could be if you're a person that you want to trade cars every year. Yes, didn't make any sense. If you're a person that doesn't trade your cars, eventually that, 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 that quote-unquote value that you lost it's going to all make up in the end anyway, because the fact is you've had the car, the new car in the earlier period. So for you, it's not a lost value. It's just like a home. When people say, well, the market says your home is worth a hundred thousand. And because, uh, uh, we're in hard times right now. Um, what I meant to say, you owe a hundred thousand, but because of the market right now, your house is worth 80 and people say, see, same thing with the car. Why would you do that? You lost money. No, you didn't. You lost money if you sell the house. But if you stay and hold on to it long enough, if everything goes well, <laughs> which history has shown it, it does. It, 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 you know, if you go through any decade, I know that was true when I was in the financial field. If you went through any decade uh, over a 10 year period, the next decade, people always made money. So bottom line is it would keep increasing. So eventually your homes would be worth more. So if you held on to it, it would eventually get back over that. So anyway, but the bottom line of this conversation is learning what debt is, learning that debt is not a bad uh, thing to have. But if you have bad debt, if you're spending all your money on clothes, you're spending all your money on shoes, you, you, you're out living at all the expensive restaurants and your $100 dinner is taking you a year to pay it off because it's on a credit card, which means that $100 dinner actually end up costing you $500. That's called bad debt because it's not doing anything to work for you. You guys get me? So really, that's really the whole key. It's not debt. That's not the problem. Let's look to see, are we creating bad debt? 
And that's the part you want to look at if you're out here dating and you're in a relationship is are they, not do they have debt, are they creating bad debt? And what is they doing? Because even as a person like myself, I would in a, in a heartbeat, any plan, any programs that I feel would help me like with what I'm, you know, sharing with you guys, or I figure it would help my, expand my brand. I would use a credit card. Or I use whatever I had. And people be like, no, you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, because I believe the return that I'm going to get for getting into that program or using that mentor, or use, I'm investing in me, but I had to go in debt to do it. But I understand that the return I'm going to get from investing in that particular program is going to benefit me. But I had to create debt in order to do it. You guys follow me? So debt's not bad depending on what, what we're getting in debt for. Now, if your person is just buying all the programs and you don't use them and you just accumulate debt, what is intended to be good debt can actually become bad debt because if you get $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 in debt and it continues and you keep buying programs and you ain't using all the information, now what is quote unquote intended to be good debt eventually could actually be bad debt because you ain't using the information. So now you're just giving away money and you're not getting anything back. So anyway, but that's why I wanted to, uh, to share that with you guys today is, again, that's why I always keep saying character and integrity. It's not about, you know, again, listen to people keep talking about money, 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 money as a character and integrity. I want to know if you do have debt, not do you have debt, because again, it's going to be hard to find people that don't have debt. And if they got money, if they if they have a lot of money, trust me, they got a lot of debt because there 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 are going to be people that use other people's money. Um, that's part of how they get more and more wealth. But anyway, um, so that's why I said character and integrity because if I know that you have good character, good integrity, you could have debt. But I understand whenever you're using debt, you're using the debt because ultimately it's going to become an investment that's going to you're going to reap the benefits for it down the line and then you'll be able to pay the debt does that make sense so but anyway i just wanted to share do not allow people to make you believe that you go and looking around for people that don't have no debt because those people are going to be hard to find and if you understand debt, what i'm sharing here then you understand debt's not bad anyway i just need to know what are you doing as you're as you're creating this debt? And is it a benefit? So, but anyway, don't let that be the driving force behind your relationship. Again, I don't know how many times I'll have to say this. Character, integrity, because if they got character and integrity, you'll know that if they are creating debt, there is a reason, there is a justification, and it's for the ultimate goal that we're going for in the end. So anyway, um, I hope that was clear. And as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you guys next Monday. And those on Relationship Thursday, I'll talk to you next week. Um, run on over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Um, that's where I have everything that I got going on right now. Um, I've had to get some things corrected found I wasn't actually working on my site, some of the buttons. So anyway, those things should all be working right now. Um, but anyway, uh, I look forward to talking to you guys. And as you know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Again, don't get caught and looking at debt as a bad word. Figure out, is it good debt, bad debt? And most importantly, look for character and integrity. And I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.